Good afternoon, my most excellent students. This is take three of the same video. That's right, when they say back up your work, make sure you do it. Today's map or today's video is all about maps and what they can do for us as historians and as people. You're gonna learn what types of maps there are out there. You're gonna learn about the different elements that most maps have in common. But again, let's start with the types of maps that are out there today. Uh, one of the maps that you're uh, most likely familiar with at this point are political maps. Political maps uh, show us about uh, where people are. Uh, they show us uh, borders between uh, states, uh, between countries, uh, and, and show us uh, the political world around us. Uh, the next type of map that you're probably pretty familiar with at this point are the physical maps. Physical maps show us about the physical world. They show us about uh, the landforms that are there. Uh, for example, you can see on this map, the, the darker brown it becomes, uh, the higher up you are, and the more green it gets, the lower you're at. So right here is sea level. You can tell that because it's green. Up here you got mountains because you got some uh, really steep elevation changes. Um, and these types of maps show us about the physical world. Another type of map you're probably pretty familiar with are weather maps, especially if you watch the news at night. They tell us about the weather um, and what, what's happening in different areas. Here you've got a map that shows us that Oregon is, of course, wet, and uh, Florida down here is dry, and this is because of La Nina this year. Okay, political, physical, weather maps. Um, we've also got road maps. Uh, road maps show us where different roads are. Uh, and they can help us find directions to get to a certain place. Uh, if you use Google Maps, you've probably seen a road map before. Um, and this is a map of different interstates in the United States. So you can see this interstate here is I-5. It goes all the way from Canada down to Mexico. Um, and they can help you plan trips, plan how you're going to get from place to place. So the, all of these maps, they're, they're made by a group of people. Um, who are called cartographers. Uh, cartographers use different tools to help map out the world. Uh, modern day cartographers use satellite images to help them create their maps and uh, definitely an interesting job career if you're interested in it. So all of these maps, political, physical, weather, road, there's different maps out there um, as well. Um, but most of them have five different things in common, five things that they've got on them. Let's take a look at this map here. Um, this is a map of Greece, an area of the world we'll be studying this year. And if you um, just looked at this map, you go, hey, cool, Greece. Uh, but before you start looking at a map, you should look at these five different things. And the first thing you should look at, of course, is the title. Just like when you're reading a book, you want to read the title of a map first. Uh, the title of this map is Greece in the Time of the Persian Wars. Oh, interesting. So this is not just a map of Greece. There's a time period associated with this map. Um, it's, it's just a map of Greece during the Persian Wars. Okay, so let's look at the next part of the map, um, which is the legend, or sometimes it's called the key. And that tells you what the different colors on a map are, the different symbols on a map um, and, and what they mean. So here I can see that um, the orangish areas, uh, these are Greek areas. So I know right here I'm looking at an orangish area that must be Greece. Um, the yellow areas, I can look at the legend, see that's Persia. So I can look over here and say, hey, it's yellow over here. This must be the Persian Empire. Okay, so we've looked at the title, we've looked at the legend and the key. Um, the next thing most maps have in common is a scale. That's right, a scale. The scale will tell you um, how big of a piece of the world are you looking at. Um, here you can see this little section here is 20 miles, right? And this whole line here is 100 miles. So you can use that to see how big of the world or what, 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 how big the area of the world you're looking at right now. Uh, the next piece of the map I'm going to have to draw in because this map doesn't have one. It's the compass. The compass tells you which way is north. Usually on a map, north is up, but sometimes it's it's slanted a bit. 
um, and it'll tell you which direction on a map um, is north. And the last thing most maps have in common are points of reference. The points of reference will tell you where in the world you are looking at, and usually they'll do it using latitude and longitude, which are these lines here. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about latitude and longitude uh, during this video, because we'll look at it later. But for now, uh, notice that there's numbers on the side of the map, and those numbers are associated with these lines. So um, those are the five things that most maps have in common. You've got a title. You've got a legend or a key. Uh, you've got the scale. You've got the compass. And you've got points of reference. And now that you've looked at all those things, you can start looking at this map and taking a look at the relationships between the people on the map because you know what the map is trying to show show you. Were you paying attention? Answer the next couple of questions to find out. What are some of the different types of maps we talked about? What can they help you learn? What are the five elements found on most maps? How are maps similar to timelines? 